All right, welcome back to building a space elevator again. So today, what we did so far is one thing that you notice in front of me is our rover, our original respawn pod, which had ran out of battery. So I just slapped on a few solar panels just for it to charge up for now. In terms of upgrading the rover, that's all we've done. <laughs> we updated the base a little bit with more speed mods, yield mods for refinery and added more assemblers so we added two more assemblers we do need to re kind of think this through because we're not utilizing all the mod space because there's a mod space underneath and that's not being utilized because it's on the ground as you see so something we got to think about and redo when we're talking about assemblers and refineries and things like that but the refinery is missing i think it's still missing some superconductors, which requires gold which we did get, but not too much of it. And we're still missing about 20 of them. So not going to be able to do that anytime soon. That's fine. So that's upgrade to the base, upgrade to the rover. And of course we did upgrade to our welding worm and not much of an upgrade, more like a fix. Cause I completely botched it up before. <laughs> And completely forgot that the inchworm section in the front, which has the pistons, is where it should be welding up forward so that the legs here has something to move on or, or have the track on. So I put in the welders, the piping, and everything like that right up front. Two of them seems to be more than sufficient at the speed it goes right in this moment, which is 0.5 velocity for four pistons. And it welds up pretty nicely, as you see here, welded up up to here, welds up the pipe and everything. We're missing a little spot here to be welded up, but once we get the inchworm moving, the rare ones will get that going, so it wouldn't be a problem. Definitely don't need three of them back here, but we can keep it for now and see how that goes. Luckily, while I was designing this thing initially, I did have the plan of connecting the pistons to the cargo containers for the welders in front but while i was building it obviously i built it all wrong and left it all in the back but luckily i did have that in mind initially and it's still functional that way and as you can see we did add a remote control some cameras right over there right there and right over here and the antenna in the back and that way we can get a nice bit of camera view from our camera control station for the time lapse or just in general viewing what's going on with it. So we have the nice view here, which is right on the remote control. We have this front one right in front of the welder. We have left of the welder and then right of the welder. Of course, we still have the panning mod so we can still pan around and see what's going on and everything like that as well. So we still have all that going on. We still have the base camera. <laughs> and that's about it for now so those are the nice little camera views that we have just for the welder and another thing that we did before uh, we move on to the main one is we kind of went back old school route of mining <laughs> and that was down done down here so the old school way of mining was basically using your hand drill to drill down the iron or stone or whatever and kind of let it roll down into some kind of collection area. So the collection area usually is a collector, but in this case is a drill. So when it's on, it actually collects the stone that it touches or the iron that it touches. That's why it's a bit of a slope here. So this was the old, old school way of me drilling back then <laughs> without any drilling or anything like that. So that way we collect all the stone or the iron really, really quickly. As you see there and it's very like particular too so you can get all the bits of iron that you can and not necessarily grab all the stone on there as well so it's very specific kind of drilling it's a slower process but it was nice to do it for the time lapse just to kind of showcase what that kind of looks like and everything just rolls into there and gets collected in the collection plate basically so that's was a big thing I did in the time lapse not a big thing but more of a time consuming thing I did in the time lapse and there's a lot of iron here so we could obviously put a hinge 
a piston and a rotor, or flip that around, rotor, piston, hinge, and do a control, custom turret controller with the drill and start drilling out from the sides. But it's just a little more convenient for me to do it by hand initially, just to make the camera a little bit bigger, and then we can put the drill system to do that. But technically, we don't even need that anymore. If we really, really didn't care to do it that way, we did have a new build. I kind of just built it randomly. I wasn't sure if I'm going to ever really use it too often, <laughs> but I kind of just wanted to build it just for things like an ice, which is what we gathered mainly with this thing. And I should have made it a little bit bigger, to be honest, but just kind of want to see how this is going to all work out. And it's actually working out okay. It's not too bad. So this is our mining rig. <laughs> a small grid one. It should have went large grid, I believe, but this is a small grid mining ship, which kind of travels really awkwardly because it's a um, very vertical ship. <laughs> Alright, so it has all the drills on the bottom. So we have um, nine drills. We have cameras, lights, small connectors, used to be called ejectors, large cargo container for a small grid, two large batteries and some smaller batteries inside remote control cameras uh two gyroscopes i think we have there two yeah two gyroscopes two or three gyroscopes how many do we have two two gyroscopes and a bunch of atmospheric thrusters so we use the fan version the flat versions for all directions except for up upwards and downwards as you see here and then inside is a helm for the character to get in. Although we don't need the character to be in there because we do have this all under a remote control with the antenna right over there. So basically, if we were to get in here, just to show you how that looks. So this here is our flying machine. <laughs> and it works out pretty well. As you see here, turning radius is pretty good with these two gyroscopes. Forward backwards it's a little slow uh, left and right it's not too bad when it's filled with stone or ice or whatever the case is yeah it's pretty bad in terms of um, moving radius but it can work it does work out okay but more importantly the outward thruster we needed a lot of it just in case we fill up a large car container and fill up the drills and then that way it's not too too bad in terms of um, flying this thing. And the, the amount of batteries here is not bad at all. Um, plug in a little bit of the small batteries. Kind of helped it out. But it's still red zones a bit. So we could add a little bit more of anything. But yeah. This is a pretty decent drill system. I mean you, ju you just pretty much go straight down. And that's how you gather all you can gather. We right click drill and then left click drill basically. To get what we need to get. And this is going to be more for like the... Gold, silver, things that are like really, really deep in size. So we can right click drill and then gather eventually with the left click drill. And if you're curious, yes, this thing can fly kind of this way as well. <laughs> so if you really want to fly this way, it's possible. But the controls are a little wonky because it's all kind of opposite because it's flying really this way. But once you get this thing filled up, unfortunately, you cannot fly it that way. <laughs> can't fly it more horizontal because the weight it cannot carry all the weight which is the fan that miss the flat atmosphere thrusters so it looks like this thing charged up nicely and for those who are wondering why i built this and then started drilling underneath the base or for iron well it's because i was trying to finish charging up this machine <laughs> before using it so that was the main reason why i, I did some hand drilling other than that, I think that covers all of today's time lapse. We should be being able to project and move forward to Inchworm quite soon. We are still having to gather a lot of materials first. I think so far it hasn't been too bad. I'm trying to queue up like thousands and thousands of steel plates as you see there. So hopefully I have enough. I have 15k now which is a decent amount it's still not enough obviously but it's a good chunk and it looks like we still have a lot of iron to kind of produce and refine and we only have one refinery right now which is the industrial refinery with the yield mods 
So I got rid of the basic refinery because I might as well get rid of it if we have the yield mods on here. And I'm pretty sure we're going to need more power relatively soon because we're only running on, I think, two, five turbines. And one actual battery <laughs> that's right there. But it looks like it's not too bad. It's filled up. Fully depletes in two. Okay, so that's not too bad. I think we have a decent chunk of battery. I'm not sure exactly. I guess five turbines is more than enough batteries for all this. Potentially. But yeah, can't wait until I release this. And hopefully this thing works out pretty well. But other than that, if you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to drop a comment down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.